Right, I've got this uh, condensing unit we installed a week ago um, for a customer, second hand. Um, so it's been refurbished. Um, we had to replace the sight glass on the compressor because that was leaking. Um, so all the oil, that's where all this oil has come from. All the start electrics were messed up, so we changed those. Anyway, when we come to run it up, um, it runs, but if you get any any decent suction pressure on there, um, it stalls. So uh, we'll see if it'll do it again. Restricted now. The T bar just over about 30 ps on the suction, 12 bar on the high side, 170 is coming up. It's got a fan speed control on, so that won't kick in until that gets up to about 250. And the uh, run current's about 10 amps. What we found is as soon as it gets up near. 16. We want to get it nice and warm anyway before we change it. I think and then goes off on the clicks and it's a bit cooler today so uh, here it's sounding like it's So the compressor gets nice and warm, get all the gas out of the oil, and we'll pump it down. It's been running long enough now, that oil's nice and warm. Shut the receiver. That's the fan speed control.
don't go too high. Yeah. At 24 psi, give, give the LP switch a flick. like it's the wrong compressor. It's like a 134A compressor or something. You can't tell because the label's worn away. Wonder whether they've made it up out of parts. See from this, it's had issues. That's that's not original. This is um, old stuff there, really. That's your crankcase here, wires there. So it's, it's had some problem in the past with dodgy connections. It might have burnt the windings up when that went. Got the recovery machine going. taken out, the wires disconnected. We took the pressure switch connections off and put some tape over them to keep the dirt out and the oil return line from the oil separator. That's where the oil um, goes back out. Um, any oil that comes out of discharge separated in here from the gas. The gas carries on off to the condenser down there and the oil comes back up this little pipe through a tap which you normally leave open and then just dumps back into the crankcase here. So I've got that disconnected, just got under the valves, lift that one off, um, lift that new one on. This is a, um, there we go, just come and see, I'm going to take him a take. made in France. Right, we've got the suction line. I've used the old valves, so they're in uh, good condition. Um, uh, suction line dryer, burnout dryer. Um, we've got the discharge valve piped into the uh, Separator. So now we've got to take these up here. And what I do is I leave the rubber bungs in there. Um, so I've got to take those out and then put the little gaskets in and then tie them up. Do the both of those. Then we've got the capillaries to put on. Leak check it, vacuum, put the gas back in. And while we're doing that, we can we can rewire the um, uh, terminals in here. So with this one, you get a new. Um, starter box, so we might use this box or we might fit these bits into the existing one. I've got the low pressure switch capillary um, done. It's doing the high side and uh, these threads are a bit rusty. I've got this thread chasing tool. There's um, normal um, quarter inch uh, flares. I think the thinner one is the older automotive ones. And I think that's a thread chaser for uh, shredder valves and that will take the shredder valve coils out. So it's, it's a handy little tool. I think it's made by CPS. Actually, that's not too bad. I think maybe, maybe the... Uh, Maybe it was the nut that was tight, not the threads. Anyway. Got the vacuum pump on it now. Well, done. There's a sort of gap between all the coils, so they're not going to rub on anything. Um, 
DC electrics uh, to the Copeland ones. So I think really for these it's quite simple, unless you're live in your neutral in, the 240 volts in, um, unless you feed to the compressor. So these here are pretty much these terminals down here. Um, so we can probably use these existing wires maybe to get us up to where we're going to put the new relay and the other capacitor that just fit in the box. That's the plan anyway. This box is too tall. I did look at fitting it. It's too tall compared to the um, existing one. Um, it wouldn't have room for the pressure switch. So it's actually bolted to the back of this. Wired, um, and some arm flex on that bit of suction line, and uh, we're just waiting for a good vacuum for the pump running. I don't know what it'll go up to with the pump shut off. Um, I think it's good enough. It's had a good vacuum when we um, put it in. Originally, so really all we need to clean out really is the compressor. Um, well it's, took, it's been on there for quite a few hours. Uh, I think that's because it's an old system, probably 20 years old. We've got the uh, run capacitor outside. Um, start caps in the box. The relays up there, they're all mounted the same way as it was originally. Um, you should always mount them the same way. Uh, some of them, you know, they'll have a little arrow on them, some need to be vertical, some need to be horizontal. Let me get some, get some gas put in this and then see what it, uh, see what it runs like. It's new gauges because my old Refco one started leaking. Um, I just thought this was going to be a tap to shut the yellow line off, but it isn't. Um, if you've got it this way over, it's full ball um, for liquid, you know, and vacuum and stuff like that. If you put it over this way, um, it meters it so you can put liquid in and it'll get, you know, into the suction without damaging the compressor. I'm not sure how useful that's going to be. I mean, usually I just throttle it with a tap, but you know, uh, neither need set of gauges, and that's what they have at the wholesalers. Over that tap. I think that's a bit better. Three kilos in there, nearly. I think we had five in there originally. Truth. It might be turned off inside. I go and check. Yeah, it was turned off. I've got the contactors inside, and I've just got an eight-pole isolator out here, just so I can turn everything off. It's got the power wires and the control wires and the crank out here. Try again.
27 FK, the roof beam is on the R22. Just check that's pumped down to about 10 psi, and then we're going to see what it cuts back in at. Ten, that's 20, 30, 40, 40, 42, or something. That's fine. Making some noise. It's a contact just for the two units, that's the bigger one, that's the one we're working on. As if the overloads trip. <clears throat> so you can tell they're wired right, it should stop when you press that. Got some vacuum switches plumbed in to uh, turn the units off when they're milking, but they're playing up at the moment. Gotta have a look at that in a minute. I don't think they've got enough vacuum because they're milking goats. I think the last one we did was a cow parlour and I wonder whether the vacuum's higher with cows. That's the hot gas lines. That's where they go out the roof and then we've got the suction and liquid line come along here. One goes through there. And the other one goes through there. And we've got one tank there. It's the one we're working on today. And we've got another one there we put in last year. And that's the heat recovery tank. That's the hot gas in and out. And that's the one we're working on today, in and, and the out. That's really hot. It's just warm. Yeah, it is hot. Don't call it hot gas for nothing. Um, that's the pump that pumps the hot water out to fill the water heaters. 